Hi, I'm Katja from Tübingen University and the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems. Today, I will talk about image synthesis with generative models. In particular, we will take a closer look at spectral artifacts and generated images and investigate if they result from a frequency bias in the architectures. This work is joint work with my great collaborators E. Liao and Andreas Geiger. So our session today will focus on generative adversarial networks, also called GANs. So let's start with a quick recap on generative, generative adversarial networks for image synthesis. One key component is the generator, which is parametrized by a neural network. It takes random noise vectors as input and learns to map them to images. Of course, at the beginning of training, generated images are not photorealistic, but rather look like these abstract images here. To train the generator, we show both its generated images and real images from the training set to another neural network, the discriminator. The discriminator tries to distinguish between real and fake samples. Over the course of training, the generator learns to generate increasingly realistic images. In turn, this makes it more difficult for the discriminator to distinguish between real and fake images. Ideally, at the end of the training, the generator samples match the data distribution and the discriminator cannot distinguish real and fake images anymore. However, when we analyze the generated images in the frequency domain, we discover that the spectral statistics do not match those of the real images. In particular, there is a peak at the end of the spectrum, so at the highest frequencies, which makes it straightforward to distinguish between real and generated images. So why is this interesting? For now, we know that in the spectral domain, a very simple classifier can almost perfectly distinguish real and fake images. This makes it straightforward to see that the learned data distribution does not match the real data distribution. But this is the key objective when training the generative model. Further, this can be observed across all common GAN architectures, which indicates that it might be, might be a systematic issue. Also, it is unclear if the generator is unable to generate the correct signal or if the discriminator is blind to the high frequency artifacts. Based on these observations, we raise the question, is there a systematic frequency bias in the generator and or the discriminator? To better understand this, let's quickly recall some fundamentals of frequency analysis. The Fourier transform tells us how we can decompose a signal into its individual frequency components. Instead of its frequency components, we can also consider the spectrum of the signal. The spectrum is defined by the magnitude of the frequency components and determines how much of each frequency component the signal contains. This means we can use the Fourier transform to analyze the spectral properties of images. But now our signal is two-dimensional, so we will have frequencies in both x and y direction. That means that our spectrum is now an image with the color indicating the magnitude of the frequency components. Here, the low frequencies lay at the center and the high frequencies lay at the border of the image. We can further reduce the spectral information to a 1D plot by computing the azimuthal average over the 2D spectrum. Thereby, we average the magnitudes of frequencies with the same absolute value, regardless their direction. This azimuthal integration of the spectrum is also referred to as the reduced spectrum. OK, with these tools at hand, let us investigate if there is a frequency bias in existing gun models. As we learned before, gun training involves two players, where architectures for both the generator and the discriminator, loss functions, as well as dataset statistics, can all affect the generated images. To narrow down potential factors, we design a simple testbed to analyze if high frequencies are more difficult to generate due to a frequency bias in the generator. We consider a conditional reconstruction task. In particular, we take a small number of images from a dataset and pair them with fixed latent codes. Given a latent code, 
the generator is optimized to reconstruct the corresponding image with a pixel-wise L2 loss. In the following, we show results for a single image and investigate how different upsampling operations in the generator affect the spectrum of the reconstructed image. We first consider bilinear upsampling, which is, for example, used in StyleGAN. For reference, you can see the ground truth image on the left. We visualize the reconstructed image and the reduced spectrum compared to the ground truth spectrum. Further, on the right, we plot the relative error between the ground truth reduced spectrum and the prediction over the course of training. This visualization allows us to detect how fast low and high frequencies are learned during training, which makes it suitable to detect a frequency bias. Okay, so now let's see how this develops over the course of training. As you can see in the beginning, the reconstructed image is very blurry. Looking at the reduced spectrum, we can see that this corresponds to learning the low frequencies first. Further, with bilinear upsampling, the generator really struggles to generate the correct high frequencies at all. The spectrum error evolution also shows this bias towards predicting too little high frequencies too little high frequencies, as indicated by the blue color. In addition, we also consider a high-pass filtered version of the image just to make sure that these findings do not depend on the spectrum itself. As you can see, the behavior is very similar, also when higher frequencies are dominant in the training data. Okay, so next we will analyze bed of nails upsampling, which inserts zeros to upsample the image and is, for example, used in PyTorch transposed convolution. As you can see here, the behavior for bed of nails is quite different. The reconstructed image sharpens quickly, and the spectrum error evolution shows that higher frequencies are learned very early. But for both training images, the reduced spectrum shows a peak at high frequencies, which indicates checkerboard patterns due to inserting zeros for upsampling. However, further experiments in our paper indicate that we can indeed get rid of this peak by adding a loss on the spectrum. Therefore, given a suitable training signal, the generator can learn to compensate for these artifacts. This leads us to question the quality of the training signal. Can the discriminator even detect high frequencies and provide the necessary supervision? Again, we design a simple test bed to answer this question. We propose a conditional reconstruction task to assess the quality of the training signal independently of the generator architecture. For this, we train a class conditional gun with a single sample per class. To minimize the impact of the generator, we directly optimize the pixel values of the fake images as learnable tensors. We optimize these learnable tensors and the discriminator weights in an alternating fashion using the GUN two-player game setting. In the following, we show results for a single image using a combination of blurring and downsampling in the discriminator to prevent aliasing. So the reduced spectrum now shows too many high frequencies. And overall, we can still see that over the course of training, the correct spectrum is not reached. However, if we look at the high-pass filtered image, now results look quite different. So now the magnitude of the high frequencies is learned correctly, but then the low frequencies are off. This shows that the discriminator is not biased towards high frequencies per se, but rather struggles to detect frequencies with low magnitudes. Also note that in both cases, the reconstructed image looks quite bad. Our experiments in the paper indicate that this indeed comes from the downsampling operations in the discriminator. OK, let me again summarize our most important findings. Different upsampling operations bias the generator towards different spectral properties. While bilinear upsampling results in too few high frequencies, but of nails upsampling introduces checkerboard pattern. However, these checkerboard artifacts cannot explain the spectral discrepancies alone, as the generator is able to compensate for these artifacts. 
The discriminator does not struggle with detecting high frequencies per se, but rather struggles with frequencies of low magnitude. Further, the downsampling operations in the discriminator can impair the quality of the training signal that it provides. In our paper, we demonstrate that these findings extend to the full gun training and investigate proposed fixes. However, we find that none of the existing fixes can fully resolve the artifacts in guns yet. If you like our work, check out our webpage and GitHub. Thanks.